I'd like to show you around my final project for cartography at UCLA. Our final project's objective was to create a relatively complex web-based map using a program called CartoDB. And using this, I made multiple maps centering around the concept of a wildlife corridor, with the cumulative result being a map with suggestions on important areas to place these corridors. Now, wildlife corridors are areas that connect uh, habitats of natural populations of species that may be interrupted by our own doing. With my maps in particular, I emphasize the disruption that major California highways pose to these species' habitats. Without corridors like this, Isolated populations have a much greater risk of going extinct, and this is very important, especially when we consider critical habitats in California. Now, critical habitats, according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, are specific geographic areas that contain features essential for the conservation of a threatened or endangered species, and that may require special management and protection. In California, there are many different vulnerable, vulnerable species that call it home. The majority of these are plants, but I focus primarily on animals, and we can see that there are many different kinds. For instance, right here we have the California condor, of course. Here um, is the red-legged frog. We have a tortoise, and then California bighorn sheep. And I really like having these interactive um, info boxes because they really emphasize having an online map, a very interactive map, um, instead of the 3D maps that what you see is what you get. For this project, I incorporated data from the National Park Service, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Environmental Protection Agency, among others, providing shape files on recreation areas, airports, and major California highways. Now my main final project map overlays many things. We have national parks ranked by their number of visits that they had in 2012. For this, I found a shapefile of the national parks and added data from the National Park Service on their yearly number of visits. Next, we have the critical habitats themselves. Uh, which I felt was most effective by depicting them as either threatened or endangered for this particular wildlife corridor map. Um, then there's the major California highways. And finally, my own creation, the wildlife corridors. I added these features by hand by creating another layer and I filtered the critical habitats layer to display only the endangered habitats and only animals that were strictly terrestrial. That means that critically endangered insects and bird habitats were not displayed as these aren't nearly as important for corridors as, for example, mammals like the bighorn sheep who need help crossing the, the highways. To create a corridor, I found a desired location, like right here outside of Yosemite, with a bighorn sheep population, I believe. Um, and I drew a line by hand over the highway, like this. I then ranked each corridor by adding another column in the new table I created from scratch and put a number from 1 to 3 in it so it could I could represent it on a chloroplast map like this. One is top priority for a corridor to be in installed. I decided that the most important corridors were uh, for these endangered habitats, but also small habitats disrupted by roads, particularly down here in San Diego, we have a lot of small ones, but also habitats like here and uh, here, over here, because they have this connection with the national park, and these areas are protected, so it's really important that they have the ability to get over to a national park and be even more protected. It's also important to note that the popularity of national parks, which was represented here by dark green, which of course uh, Yosemite is number one, uh, because this will have an influence on the endangered and threatened areas. This may be negative because they have a lot of people going there and it might disrupt the species even more, or it might be positive and the National Park Service and the rangers there may be able to bring awareness, a much needed awareness to this issue. 
which one is correct, I'm not quite sure right now, but I thought it was important to mark the number of visits that each park got. I was also on the side interested in looking at what else is affecting these areas, these, these habitats. So I created this map that includes airports, recreation areas, and toxic chemical release. So we can see right here, for example, this area that belongs to a fish is highly, highly surrounded by these toxic dump sites. And you can only imagine what the area that the fish is living in may contain. I also wanted to add a further resources page because I felt no environmental project or paper is complete without a what can you do section. I'm really proud of my final project because I think that there's some very important information that we can gather from them. First of all, there's a lot more critical habitats in the state than I even imagined, and they're all being disrupted by a lot of our developments. Wildlife corridors are expensive, but when you have important and endangered animals like the mountain lion that die with just trying to find food and shelter by crossing a road, there's something really wrong with what we're doing and we need to do something to help change this. I recommend signing this petition that's located on the More Resources page if you feel the same way. And I hope you learned some things about wildlife corridors in the state of California. Happy holidays and thanks for a great term.